existence of complex biological machines raises an obvious question. If natural selection wasn't the agent of their construction, then what was? The centerpiece of my investigation was an interview with philosopher of science, Dr. Stephen Meyer. Meyer, who holds a PhD from Cambridge University, brought me face to face with the most efficient information processing system in the universe. The DNA molecule and its language of life. The discovery of the information bearing properties of DNA and RNA is a fundamental challenge to all materialistic theories of the origin of life. Neo-Darwinism and its associated theories of chemical evolution and the like will not be able to survive the biology of the information age, the biology of the 21st century. Meyer's conclusions are based upon his understanding of the DNA molecule and the genetic instructions that are locked within the nucleus of living cells. In 1953, when Watson and Crick elucidated the structure of the DNA molecule, they discovered that DNA was a carrier of genetic information in the form of a four-character digital code. That is to say that DNA functions like a software program, only more complex than any anyone has ever created or devised. For a biological system to run and operate, it needs genetic information to build the proteins and protein machines that cause the cells to maintain their function. This information is stored in a precise arrangement of four chemicals that scientists represent with the letters A, C, T, and G. Sequences of these chemicals provide the instructions necessary to assemble complex protein molecules that in turn help form structures as diverse as eyes, legs, wings, and hearts. This code has been called the language of life, and it is the most densely packed and elaborately detailed assembly of information in the known universe. Geneticist Michael Denton has estimated that the amount of biological information necessary to build all of the proteins in all of the species of organisms that have ever existed on planet Earth could be held in a single teaspoon. And we'd still have room left over for all of the information contained in every book ever written. The more I learned about DNA, the more I understood the significance of what Stephen Meyer called the most fundamental question facing biology today. Where did the information in DNA come from? How did it arise in the first place? Well, lots of people have wanted to explain the origin of information by reference to the laws of physics and chemistry or by reference to the chemical properties of the constituent parts of the DNA. But that would be like saying that you could explain the information in this morning's uh, New York Times headline by reference to the physics and chemistry of ink bonding to paper. There is a chemical explanation as to why the ink sticks to the paper, but that does not explain the way the ink got arranged to convey a message that could be understood by speakers of the English language. Information it requires a material medium, but it transcends the material medium. An explanation for the origin of the genetic instructions needed to build the first life is the holy grail of 21st century biology. Theories proposing that this information arose through natural selection acting upon non-living molecules or the self-organizing power of chemicals in a primordial soup have repeatedly failed. Even time and blind chance, the oft-invoked saviors of implausible biological scenarios, have fallen far short as accounts for the source of the instructions in DNA. Mathematicians, for example, have calculated that a universe filled with monkeys, typing relentlessly throughout the oldest estimated age of the cosmos, would have no realistic chance of producing Shakespeare's play Hamlet let alone a transcript of the genetic information required to build even the simplest living cell. Based on our uniform and repeated experience, which is the basis of all scientific reasoning about the past, there is only one known cause for the origin of information, and that cause is intelligence. 
Whether we're looking at a hieroglyphic inscription, a section of text in a book, or a computer software, if you have information and you trace it back to its source, invariably you come to an intelligence. Therefore, when you find information inscribed along the backbone of the DNA molecule in the cell, the most rational inference based on our repeated experience is that an intelligence of some kind played a role in the origin of that information. The implications of the scientific evidence, coupled with Meyer's logic, are profound. If we are finding information inside every cell and every living creature, could that not be, in a sense, the signature of a creator? Thirty centuries before science unlocked the mysteries of genetic information, or a telescope probed billions of light years into space, the Hebrew shepherd and poet David wrote eloquently of a creator who revealed his existence and power through all that he had made. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they proclaim knowledge. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. God himself is invisible. He is a spirit. And yet, one of the purposes he has for us is to find him so we can know him. And he's left behind a series of clues. And sometimes we just have to kind of take our blinders off and get beyond our presuppositions and say, wait a minute, I am gonna pursue the evidence of science wherever it points. And if it takes me to a very uncomfortable conclusion that there is a creator, then if the evidence points in that direction, that's the way I'm gonna go. According to a lot of the mainstream media, the theory of intelligent design is a faith-based idea. And in saying that, they want to dismiss it as something that has no basis in science. But the media has confused a fundamental issue. They're confusing the evidence for the theory with the implications of the theory. The theory of intelligent design may well have implications that are supportive of theistic belief, but the theory is not based on theistic belief. It's based on the discovery of digital code in cells, miniature machines in cells, the fine-tuning of the laws of physics and chemistry, and standard ways of scientific reasoning about the remote past in the history of life. Forty years ago, a lecture in a high school biology class convinced an inquisitive 14-year-old freshman that there was no God. Ironically, years later, it was an open-minded investigation of scientific evidence that led Lee Strobel to belief in a creator. One of the most interesting things I've learned as I've gone on this journey of scientific discovery has been that you don't have to commit intellectual suicide to come to the conclusion that there is an intelligent designer. Because today, science is pointing more directly and more powerfully toward a creator than any other time in the history of the world. I was trained in journalism and law to respond to truth. I had to take a step of faith in the same direction that that evidence is flowing which is logical and rational. We do that every day of our life. We make steps of faith based on the evidence that we perceive. And so it was the most logical and rational step I've ever taken to put my faith in the creator that science tells me exists.